Hello, my name is Sam Shukla. I am a nurse and a graduate student at the, UNI at the UC Davis Health Informatics Program in Sacramento, California. I'm going to talk about a computer program that I built in a class called Clinical Decision Support, taught by Professor Wassel Molly and Dr. Jim Green. The class was Health Informatics 207. The book I was required to read was called Clinical Decision Support, The Road Ahead, edited by Robert A. Greenis, MD, PhD. I will specifically go over what I learned in Chapter 12, Decision Rules and Expressions. This presentation will have three parts. One, to point out specific quotations and excerpts that help guide my efforts in building my first clinical decision support computer program. Two, to show the computer syntax of my computer program. Three, to show the actual program itself. The title of this presentation is Building a Clinical Decision Support Program Using the Python Programming Language. As stated before, this is the book that we are required to read, Clinical Decision Support, The Road Ahead. I will go over particular quotations and excerpts that help guide me in the building of this computer program. Decision rules then represent a form of algorithm typically represented as discriminating questions or logical if-then statements that may be followed to reach some conclusion. In a system based on production rules, each unit of knowledge is a single if-then logical statement and an inference engine evaluating the available data and statements, chooses which statements to execute next. This is a graphical representation of a decision tree, essentially showing visually the if this occurs, then do this. Nearly any programming language that supports subroutines, functions, or procedures may be used to encode the clinical knowledge in executable format. So I had, but prior to this class, immediately prior to this class, I had taken an intro to Java course. And uh, Dr. Uh, Wasomali had said to me, um, if I am an, interested in computer programming, to try and learn Python. That's the new, that's a relatively new computer program, but big companies like Google are using it and so I decided to try and learn that language by writing this program but on, back to the book so further excerpts are moreover conventional programming languages such as C++ or Java typically offer libraries of pre-programmed functions to perform common tasks tasks such as retrieving data from databases thus facilitating the interface between the decision rule and data repositories Consequently, they are sometimes called condition action rules. The conventional format for a production rule is the if-then statement. If condition occurs, then take action. Where condition represents a logical statement that, if true, leads to the action being undertaken. The condition part is sometimes known as the left-hand side of the statement, and the action is known as the right-hand side of the statement. Typical clinical conditions on the left-hand side are can be potassium greater than 5.5, potassium greater than 5.5, and creatinine less than 2.0. Diagnosis equals acute renal failure or potassium greater than 5.5 and creatinine less than 2. Typical actions include consider reducing the dose of the drug. Diagnosis, acute renal failure. Creatinine clearance equals 54. And a decision rule is a representation of deterministic reasoning in which branching logic is used in combination with data to reach conclusions regarding diagnosis, treatment, or, and other important clinical goals. So this was essentially the format that I followed. If and statements, branching logic, and logical conclusions. So, my interpreter of choice was Eclipse. I have this program laid out in a couple different sections. 
The first part is the GUI, Graphical User Interface Layout. So I've got a main grid over here. I've got a top left section of the main grid, which contains my vital sign labels, my vital sign spin boxes. I have a bottom window that contains um, Chem 7 values, that contains complete blood, count, uh, complete blood count labels and spin boxes, and arterial blood gas labels and spin boxes. I also have three buttons, no sorry, four buttons and a dial on the bottom section. And then after that I have um, connections to those four buttons I had just spoken about as well as um, what happens when those buttons get pushed. And then I have more layout type stuff. As you can see, so if temperature T dot value, that's my temperature, is less than 35, then give me these possible diagnoses right here. And these are possible interventions that relate to that possible diagnosis. If T dot value temperature is greater than 38.5, then give me these possible diagnoses right here and give me these possible interventions right here and so on and so forth on down the line for all these vital signs. I also demonstrate that a combination of different variables out of range can come up with its own diagnoses. For example, the arterial blood gas values even in, t in times when pH is in the normal range can be considered acidotic or alkalotic, but is determined by the other variables obtained in the arterial blood gas, such as carbon dioxide level and bicarbonate level. Also, I will take five variables that indicate early sepsis and combine them together to show that a sepsis protocol is recommended in that certain situation. This is important because sepsis, when caught in its early stages, decreases a patient's hospital length of stay considerably. And as I push run here, the program that comes up looks like this. As you can see, vital signs up here. I've got a Chem 7 here on the left side. I have complete blood count here in the middle. I have arterial blood gas here on the right side. These are the four buttons I was talking about. I, I can push diagnose when the temperature is greater than 38.5. And uh, hyperthermia, malignant hyperthermia, stroke, heat stroke rather, MDMA induced hyperthermia, as well as possible interventions high systolic blood pressure we'll add right on to that and say hypertension untreated pain anxiety possible interventions and then I can go below the intervention sorry below the th normal threshold blood pressure 63 push diagnosed and that hypertension turns into hypotension hypovolemia consider normal saline or vasopressors. Heart rate, I can go heart rate, high heart rate, give me a diagnosis there. And over here I'll have sinus tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, a flutter, dehydration. And then I can also go low heart rate and that will change to sinus bradycardia, junctional rhythm, heart block, obtain EKG, atropine, prepare for pacemaker. And I can clear that all out. I can come over here and give you some examples of blood sugar. So when blood sugar is low in the 40s range, it will say give one amp dextrose 50 ml IV, recheck blood sugar till stable. If it's even lower, it'll say give 2 amps dextrose. Then I'll have a normal range, 80 to 120, diagnose, and nothing comes up. Then I can have 
kind of a high range, 150s, and it gives two it says to give two units sub Q. I can say to go in the 200 range, it gives six units sub Q. Possible diagnosis of hyperglycemia, diabetic, ketoacidosis. And then I can go blood sugar 500. Push diagnose. And consider insulin drip is added as well as IV insulin. Now, here's where I was talking about the arterial blood gas can be normal, 7.40, but can have, can be considered normal, or rather, let's see, Here's what you can get, even though the pH is normal, 7.40. You can get compensated respiratory acidosis because the carbon dioxide is high as well as the bicarb is high. And these are possible interventions. Anxiolytic, bronchodilate, diuretics, BiPAP, intubate. And then I can go down in the other section, uh, other range, say bicarb is low carbon dioxide is low and now I have compensated respiratory alkalosis I can have compensated metabolic acidosis and these are your possible interventions and possible diagnoses for that and now let me show you what happens when bicarb is normal pH is low should get uncompensated respiratory acidosis and that's what you get. Okay. Now I'm going to put together five variables and come up with one single diagnosis. And that is going to be high temperature, high heart rate, low blood pressure, high white blood cell count and a low uh, partial arterial carbon dioxide level and it will come up with a possible diagnosis of sepsis and you would start the sepsis protocol right here in big blue letters and that's important as I stated earlier because catching sepsis early will decrease the patient's length of stay as well as decrease hospital costs. So also, I, if I push this link button here, this is kind of cool about Python and PySide. PySide was the um, graphical user interface which is an add-on to Python. And that's what this whole GUI is made of, is PySide. So when I push link here, it comes up with a with the web window here of Yahoo, I can change this to whatever I want. But up here on the right, I have WebMD. And I can just go up and down, up and down, click some links, COPD. And just read a little bit more about it if I wanted to. I can close the web with this button right there. So that's my program. I hope that you gain some understanding of the complexities of a clinical decision support system. The next step for me is to learn is to move on and learn about um, some of the predictive act, um, learning using logistic regression uh, techniques. And um, I hope to see you when I make that video. Thank you so much. My name is Sam Shukla. I am a nurse and I am a graduate student at the Health Informatics Program at UC Davis.